Greetings everyone, this is Derek Ong with the continuation of the video series for Smart PLS uh, for research. Um, so um, this video will concentrate on the assessment of structural model, which uh, the preceding videos I've already done something on the measurement models. Now, I'm just going to take you through the uh, five steps uh, in terms of uh, the theory behind what to do for the structural model uh, and then I will probably break down the video into a little bit more uh, palatable uh, steps for you to look at. So um, there are five steps as I mentioned in the assessment of the structural model uh, where you need to first look at uh, the collinearity issues uh, where where in the measurement model we looked at the vertical collinearity. Now in the structural model we have to look at the lateral collinearity, which is basically the uh, evaluation of the formative measurement models. If you notice that these are now become formative. Uh, just now in the measurement model the arrows pointing out was considered the reflective, but now we have to look at the uh, vertical VIF and to assess the uh, lateral collinearity. So uh, this is to ensure that there is no uh, multi-collinearity between the latent variables. Uh, I know that we have checked the uh, uh, discriminant validity between the variables, but then you all can never be too sure. Okay, so in this example, you can see that there is three regressions which you need to check for their lateral collinearity. Now in step two is where we will look at the direct effects or the predictive uh, strength of the uh, variables uh, in terms of the uh, uh, hypothesis testing or the direct effect and for some cases the indirect effect which I'm going to do in another video. Uh, do you assess the significance of this uh, using the means of bootstrapping? And you can also look at these slides uh, by pausing the video if you want to, just to read a little bit, but I'm not going to look at it too much. So basically, what is bootstrapping? Bootstrapping estimates the spread, shape, and the biasness of sampling distribution of the population from which the sample study is drawn from. Now, if you know that uh, I've mentioned before that the uh, Smart PLS assumes that your data set is not normal, so therefore creating a bootstrap will help to enhance the uh, sampling distribution to approach uh, normality. And that's why uh, this is good in Smart PLS because it helps us to overcome that problem of non-normality. So bootstrap analysis is used to evaluate the direct effects and also in some cases the indirect effects. So as long as the T here is, sorry, as long as the T here is more than 1.96 for a two-tier test, as according to Ping and Lai, um, some people would suggest you bootstrap at a resample of 5,000, but you don't really have to go that high. You can just stick to a resample of 500 will do. Okay. And when you do bootstrap, um, you will get your R square, which is a measure of the proportion of variance. Now, this R square is important because we're going to be using it to calculate our predictive relevance, uh, which is the exogenous construct using. Oh, sorry, the R square is used to predict the effect size. Yeah. Uh, the predictive relevance is the exogenous construct of blindfolding procedure and uh, we are going to take out uh, um, some data points in between and we're going to use the remaining data points to uh, re-estimate the parameters. Uh, as long as the indicators omitted uh, to estimate the parameters remaining data points are not too far off then uh, we know that the uh, predictive relevance of the exogenous constructs from the uh, uh, latent variables are quite high. And uh, we will follow the convention uh, set by uh, 
uh, Hensler and Tenet House, the values of 0 0.02, uh, Cohen's uh, 1998 actually, 0 0.02, 0 0.15, 0 0.35, indicating small, medium, and large predictive relevance. Now using the effect size, uh, we are also going to be using the R squared to help us to uh, calculate the effect size. Same thing again. And the effect size is to evaluate now the omitted construct rather than the uh, data point as used by predictive relevance. So the difference between the predictive relevance and the effect size is that this, we take out the data point of the endogenous construct. This, we take out the construct itself. So we just want to see how much without the construct, uh, the uh, construct of the independent variable contributes to the variance of the uh, dependent variable. So that's all for the theory. And uh, once we get into the next video, I'm going to show you how to do the uh, calculation and as well as the reporting. So thank you.